Hi, I'm Jane Tompkins, Director of Engineering at Webster Engineering and Manufacturing. Today I want to talk to you about a new combustion control system we have. It's the air density trim system. And it gives you an opportunity to save about 2% on average on your fuel bill. In addition to having some other qualities like saving on your electric bill, uh, noise reduction, and a control that is so simple that you won't even know it's there in terms of setup and operation. So with that, uh, we'll introduce you to some of the aspects of Webster and the details of this new, new control. The air density trim system is a combustion control device. That means that we are affecting the combustion of the system. And to help you understand that, we want to kind of go through what normally happens in a startup on a burger. And what we're trying to do is control the ratio of fuel to air so that we have uh, completely burning all the fuel, but not too much air so that we become inefficient. What we do is we actually control a series of valves. This is a gas valve. And you can see the butterfly inside here. And whether it's a linkage system or a parallel positioning system, we are simply positioning this valve to say that at this firing rate, we want this air valve in one position, we want the gas valve in another position, and that should give us the right ratio of gas to fuel. Now, what, what can happen is the density of these fuels can change, the density of the air can change, and that means that even though you've got the valve in this position, the actual quantity of air going through or gas going through can change. And, and if you think about uh, the changes that can occur on natural gas, it's usually pretty stable. It comes underground, it's about 60 degrees F, and of course we have a gas pressure regulator to maintain a constant pressure. On the other hand, on the air side, we can have a fairly big swing in air temperature. It can easily be in the 40s or 50s in the wintertime. It can easily be well over 100 degrees in the summertime. That change in temperature results in a change in the amount of air that goes to the burner. So we've got some demonstrations here to help you visualize that, and we'll walk through that now. What I have here is a visual representation of air. This happens to be at 80 degrees F in fuel. And what we're trying to show here is relative volumes of what you deal with with natural gas and combustion air in a burner. And of course we use a lot more air than we do fuel, and that's what this helps represent. Again, this is the air at kind of a normal temperature, we say 80 degrees F, kind of the middle of the road, uh, not too hot, too cold. Uh, but in fact it will vary a lot. And what happens when it varies is it changes the volume. This shows the same quantity in terms of mass of air, but what happens to the volume when it gets warmer? It gets much larger. So there's, there's a difference in density when we talk about what happens when it warms up. Now let's take a look at what happens when it cools down. This is that same comparison between 40 degrees F and 80 degrees F. Again, considerable reduction in density when, these, uh, when the air changes temperature, and as a matter of fact, that directly relates to the fuel-air ratio whenever the air temperature changes. What happens in a burner, and specifically on the air side, is that the fan produces a constant volume of air. That means it delivers a certain quantity, or CFM, or cubic feet per minute, of air all the time. It doesn't care what the temperature is, it doesn't care what the density is, it always gives you a specific volume all the time. Of course, even though the volume is the same, the mass flow is much different, and that's what these balloons represent. It takes, it takes a much bigger volume of 80 degree air to provide the same mass as 40 degree air, and the fan doesn't do it. It gives you the same volume, not the same mass. So when we're running this burner and the air temperature changes, the fuel air ratio will directly change in regards to the, cha the change in temperature. The ideal gas law that says the change in temperature of the absolute temperature, absolute means you add 460 degrees to your temperature in Fahrenheit, that relationship, that ratio, is exactly the same as the ratio of the change in density. So if we go from 100 degrees Fahrenheit 
to 60 degree Fahrenheit and do the multiplication, you'll see an increase in density of 8%. As it gets cooler, the density improves. But by the same token, we have another law called the fan law that says the volume, the volume of the gas will be directly related to the speed of a fan. As the fan speeds up, obviously you get more volume. What we can do is we can run from 3450 RPM down to 3200 RPM and have that ratio give us a reduction of speed of 8% which directly offsets the increased density of 8%. So we have some simple laws here that tell us what's happening to air density because of temperature and how to correct it by changing the fan speed. We happen to have here a burner that's equipped with the ADT control system. And what you're looking at here is a liver box and the control panel of a typical little burner. And what we have is the air temperature sensor right here that measures the combustion air temperature. Obviously, it's close to the uh, louver box so that it can actually sense the temperature of the air going in. Here's the control panel of the ADT control system. You can see the normal flame safeguard here that you'd find on any burner. This happens to be a fire eye control. What's special about this one is it has a variable frequency drive on it. And, of course, the key to the ADT control system is this control board right here. This is what provides all the safety control as well as the intelligence of the trim system itself. We have here a demonstration unit to show off our ADT system. And what we have is a standard JDS2 burner. It's firing natural gas. It happens to have FGR on it, uh, but it could be any fuel with or without FGR. What makes it unique for this demonstration is we have a combustion air heater built into it. And that's this box right down here. We have two electric heaters in the box. We have one here, one here, and a simple little control panel that allows us to turn the heaters on or off. That allows us to adjust the combustion air temperature, which of course is what this ADT system is all about. On our demonstration burner, we have some features built into it that makes it easy for us to see what's going on. We have three digital displays here. Uh, the percent oxygen, which tells us the excess air, the amount of additional air that's going through the burner. Motor RPM, which is part of what the control system is going to do to manage the control of the burner. And the combustion air temperature. That's what the air density trim system is all about. And the burner itself, of course, we have the uh, variable frequency drive, which is right here. Uh, we have the other control elements built within the box. And of course, we are measuring the combustion air temperature with a sensor located right here. And as you can see, that's downstream of the box, so as we warm up or cool down the air, this sensor will pick up that temperature. The oxygen reading is coming from a Thermox in situ analyzer that's mounted in the stack. We have a demonstration burner operating now so that we can actually walk through a demonstration of how a normal burner works with changing air temperature. What we have right now is the burner just sitting with normal air coming in, but of course we've got our combustion air heater that we can turn on so you can see what happens as the air warms up. The display numbers over here will actually show the results in additional excess air and so forth. So what I'm going to do right now is turn the heaters on. Now we're starting with an oxygen level of about 4.4 percent. The air temperature is about 66 degrees. You can see the air temperature is increasing and momentarily you'll see a change in the O2 level. The oxygen level is decreasing because as the air warms up, it has less density, less air in its mass. It'll take a few minutes for everything to stabilize, uh, but what we'll see is about 3.3% oxygen from a starting level of about 4.4 and a temperature of about 117 degrees. That difference in temperature 
is driving the difference in excess air because of the density difference. We have the burner running with the ADT control on this time. What that means is that uh, it will start to compensate for changes in air temperature by changing the fan speed. Right now we have all the heaters on, so it's running relatively hot, about 117 degrees, and the fan speed is very close to the same as an uncontrolled unit because it's adjusted to turn at 3450 at 120 degrees F. We're very close to that temperature. Now what I'm gonna do is turn the control off so you're gonna see a big drop in temperature. You'll see some change in O2, and then you'll see the control correct for it. So right now, uh, we're running at about 2.9% O2, about 3,400 RPM, and about 118 degrees combustion air temperature. So I'm gonna turn the control off, and you'll see the combustion air temperature start to drop. As the combustion air temperature drops, the O2 will go up slightly, but then you're going to start seeing the fan motor speed slow down to compensate for that change in air density. combustion air temperature wouldn't change this quickly in such a short amount of time, so there's some delay in the control speed, which is purposely built into it. But it helps you see the control take that action and actually start to slow the fan down and compensate for the O2 level. As the temperature starts to stabilize, and the control's reading that temperature, it's bringing the fan speed down. We're down about uh, under 3,200 RPM. The O2 level has gotten very close to where we started. Eventually, that'll all come into sync. And what it demonstrates is, even though we are changing the combustion air by quite a bit, temperature change is fairly significant, at the end of that process, the O2 level remains constant. And in fact, uh, there's no change in the process because it's a feed forward control. It does this automatically as it senses the temperature, so uh, it doesn't have to wait for a feedback signal from like an O2 analyzer or some other device. It's all feed forward based strictly on the combustion air temperature. We're here with our demonstration burner, this time with the air density trim system turned on. What that means is, we're going to see this control responding to the change in air temperature. So if you take a look at the numbers that we have right now, we're running about 60 degrees, 61 degrees Fahrenheit, a fan speed of 3130, and an O2 of about 2.8%. What I'm going to do now is turn the heaters on, and you're going to see the temperature rise. Temperature is going up very quickly. It was at 62 degrees. It's going up into the mid 70s and into the mid 80s. Uh, so it goes up very quickly. That rapid increase in temperature is actually going to show up in the O2 with a momentary drop in the O2 level until the control starts to respond to that change in temperature and, in fact, speeds up the fan to give it more air. The higher air temperature means it has less mass, and so it doesn't have enough air to consume all of the fuel like it was originally. So increasing the fan speed will indeed give it more air to give you the same excess air level. You can see the motor speed continuing to rise. You can see the O2 level starting to correct and come back. And as soon as it stabilizes here in a minute or so, it'll be right back to the original numbers that we saw in terms of excess air.
throw is off right now. As you can see, it's running at 2453 RPM, uh, 60 degree air temperature, and about 4.2% oxygen. The other thing I want you to look at is the efficiency. We have a combustion analyzer tied in here that's reading losses and efficiency. We're running about 82.4% efficiency in this particular application. Now what I'm going to do is simply turn the air density trim system on. It will start correcting for the combustion air temperature that it sees right now, and I want you to watch what happens both to the RPM of the motor and also the efficiency of the unit. You can see the fan speed dropping off, and that's because it realizes it doesn't need as much air because of the lower temperature and higher density that it has. You can also see the efficiency is improving because as we reduce the quantity of air, it reduces the amount of losses that we have and improves the combustion efficiency of the unit. So when we turn the air density trim system on, you can see we picked up about 1% in efficiency. And that's because of the difference in excess air levels that we're seeing. Right now the ADT control is off. What we're looking at this time is the amp draw of the motor. Now, this is a normal application where, in this particular case, we've got 2.7 amps. But with the ADT, when we slow the fan speed down, when I turn it on for you, you're going to see that you're going to reduce the amp draw of the motor, which directly ties to your electrical pump. So we're slowing the fan speed from 3450 down to some lower number, and you can see directly the amp draw diminish, going from about 2.7 amps down to about uh, 2 amps, it's going to save you a fairly significant portion of your electrical bill. So like all variable speed drives, this gives you the bonus of having an electrical savings in addition uh, to the fact that we have fuel savings. So you can see that Webster is the only company that offers is this new revolutionary combustion control system where you get most of the benefits of an O2 trim system, a true combustion analyzer, without all the cost, headaches, and maintenance that goes with that system. Uh, we offer a payback analysis, and in addition, you can go to our website, www.webster-engineering.com, and take a look at our full product offering, look at some payback scenarios, uh, think about Webster the next time you're doing a retrofit, the next time you're looking at an uh, opportunity for a burner boiler package, and look at the full line offering that we make available to you. Thanks and have a great day.